Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to Dance Visions. My name is David Hamilton. And Olga Faraponova. We are so excited to be with you today on your session. We hope that you enjoy the information that we have for you and that you find this information very beneficial and very helpful to your future dancing. In San Francisco, high on a hill, it calls to me. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited about the video that we are about to show you here. This is a, uh, information that Olga and I have really uh, looked forward to expressing to you about dancing. Besides the other tapes that we have in our library of the choreography and the technique, we haven't had the opportunity to speak to you much about the actual expressions, the emotions and the feelings that you feel in your body as you take to certain actions. We find that it's a, a, a very a common flaw in the dancer that they really don't take the time to feel and appreciate the motion of the action that they're performing and how it emotionally makes you feel. One of the strongest things that I enjoyed about Olga's dancing was that the emotions that came out of her body and her facial expressions just created a very comfort zone in my body and, and my feeling when I was dancing with her. There were several times where articles were written about our dancing where Olga invited you to come out onto the dance floor and to dance with her. That is our goal with you today. We want to make you truly emotionally feel the actions that you are dancing. Because that when you think about it, that when you're out on the floor performing, whether it be in a showcase, uh, a private function, or if you're doing a uh, competition, your viewing audience and your judges are listening to the music of which that you're dancing to. They are feeling something from this music. And they are hoping that you as the dancer can deliver physically and emotionally what it is that they're feeling when they're listening. This is part of our duty as the dancer and the performer is to make the audience and the viewing people feel good about what it is that you're doing. So our goal today is to enlighten you and to give you a different perspective of how to learn about your dancing. Obviously, we have to have the control and the techniques in our body to be able to get through the motions and the positions that your choreography is asking you to do. But in the end, if you cannot really emotionally feel or make a decision about what the intent is of your motion, it makes it very difficult for the one that's watching to have the belief and the feeling of what it is that you're wanting to show. So our goal here is to give you some examples to enlighten you, to, 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 to go within yourself as the dancer, to allow the emotional part of your dancing and the artistic expression of your body to come across into the motions that you're doing. Olga? Mm -hmm. I remember when I came to this country about 11 years ago, uh, Stanislav Popov um, showed to me or gave it to me a painting with the ballerina and it was word underneath of it, believe in yourself and everything is possible. I would hope you will also listen this, to these words, to believe in yourself, believe in your body, and trust what you're doing. Trust yourself first. Trust your partner. Make yourself possible. Make all of the steps is believable, and you will achieve your goal. To dance with the music, dance with yourself, dance with your partner, and enjoy to what you're doing. One of the most important things about about dancing to music is to be able to emotionally um, describe, to find words that are matching the music of which that you're listening to. There is a wide variety and library of music out there and as for us and as for you when you dance in a competition you really don't know the music that you're going to dance to. <clears throat> so what it is that we always suggest first is to feel the emotional connection between you and your partner. To walk out onto the dance floor and to take your positions and truly allow yourselves to release your emotions and to release your feelings to your partner. I could always trust the fact that when I walked out onto the floor with Olga that I never felt a moment of emotional disconnection with her. Just even as we were walking out onto the dance floor, she would take a position and she would create an image and a look in her body. And I'm going to filter and feed off of that emotion, and I'm going to give that back to her. That is one of the strong points about 
partnership dancing is to being able to emotionally and then physically connect with one another. So if you were to first think about the dance that you're doing, waltz. We find waltz to be a very, very elegant, beautiful, flowing dance. It's a very romantic dance. However, there are times with the orchestrations of the music that you get, we'll get a little bit of a variety in this music. Some of this music has a very light, loving feeling to it. Some waltzes are very dramatic. They're very, very sad. They're very heavy, and they feel very deep. For us as a partnership, that was our favorite type of waltz. But it didn't necessarily mean that that's the style that we did all the time. We had to listen so strongly to the music that, that, we were, that, were be, that was being played for us as to how we would emotionally react. So we're going to show you a couple of motions, any motion that you feel that you could create in your body, and to experiment with yourself as the dancer, and to experiment with yourself as the person, of the different emotions that you could possibly create in your look and your body. If we were to stand out onto the floor and to take this position, and I think, and I know rather, that I'm going to be doing the waltz, I'm going to stand there very tall, I'm going to feel very classical in my body. And before that music starts, I feel like that I have registered that intent and that feeling with my partner. She could feel my energy as I lifted my body and presented myself to her because you see the reaction it is that I'm getting. Versus, this is my choreography. I'm supposed to stand on my right foot. She's supposed to stand on her left foot. And we're supposed to stand up nice and tall and straight and wait for our music. So it feels rather cold and you could see that even there she was struggling as to which foot it was that she was to be on so she's thinking about her steps and her feet and not what actually is happening in her her body and her feeling so what I would like to do I'm going to choose an emotion I'm going to choose a very dominant effect over her at this point and without asking her what kind of reaction that she's going to give me, you're going to be able to see and feel that in the intent of which that I'm going to take to this motion as the type of reaction that I'm going to get. Again, thinking that I'm doing the waltz. So I feel waltzy in my body. I feel waltz music playing in my head before the music even begins to take me into a surreal place to where I feel the confidence to be able to deliver what I want to. So I felt very dominant over her with the height of my body, the shape that I have in my body, and the actual focus that I have of my face and my eyes to her. So her own personal expression was that of a reaction. We react through the course of our entire day to anything, standing in line at the grocery store, someone cuts you off on the car, there's an immediate emotional reaction. And so this is so necessary for you as the dancer to get in touch with this particular phase. And this is what we love so much about being able to share this time with you as to how important that I feel that it is to me. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to change my emotion you will obviously be able to feel what I'm thinking in my body as I stand here and I take a drop of my body weight and threw at her. So this had a little bit more of a giving, loving, romantic approach than it did a dominant approach. And again, the reaction from her was that she could feel the level of my body weight. She could feel the intent of where I was traveling to her. And so again, without sometimes not necessarily having to say, okay, are we going to go down here? Or are we going to go up here? Just by being aware of each other. Just by being aware of each other as to how one would react. So you see that one was quite different from the last one because as I approached her, I elevated my body weight once again and came over the top of her versus the one prior to that. I stayed at this level and I came through her, more giving to her. So you can see 
just with the emotional intent, how different of an action that can be created in the body. And I just think that it's so necessary for you to take this opportunity to go back to your routines and your choreography and experiment with this. What I think that we would like to do for you now is to just sort of show you all of the different prospects that you have in your body to create and where it is that we feel like that you can work from. So I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things. Olga's going to go along with me. And then I'm going to turn it over to her to, to allow her to give the ladies the perspective of everything that we've just talked about. We have several different ways in our body that we can just create motions. We think about the fact that we have the control of our body to do a variety of actions. We can rotate our body. We can just take our body and rotate it around our center spine. So the rotation of your body is a very, very important, yes, technical aspect of dancing, but it's also a very emotional aspect of the dancing. On the competitive dance floor, volume and space is very, very crucial for your overall performance. So the use of your rotation, as Olga demonstrates so well for us when we danced, of a horizontal perspective of rotation and a vertical perspective of rotation. So we're going to step forward on our left foot and a lunge, and we're going to show you the horizontal perspective of our rotation as we dance all the way around that circle with our back and our arms and our hands. You see very naturally that it creates a shape in the body. So the use of rotation, very, very strong expression in your body. We are going to now show you as we step forward on our left foot, we're going to show you the vertical perspective of rotation. And you can see again in the body the expression that's created through the different dimensions of the circular action and as well for the expression of my body and my face to follow my hand, which that you can see creates a lovely diagonal shape in the body. So the shapes of the body, the rotation of the body, these are two very strong essential tools that we have to not only help us technically move our body, but to make that a part of the expression, to make it a part of the emotion. I liked to direct it as a motion created from an emotion. Motion to emotion. So very, very important. You can also see in our body as we go to, to, to sort of isolate and separate the rib cage area that we can create rotations just in the rib cage itself. Latin dancing, this is very, very important to be able to isolate your rib cage. We can also create diagonal energy or diagonal shapes through our ribs and our back by taking an opposition from a back to a front and shaping it through your body. This is something that Olga does so very well. It was very helpful to our dancing when she worked her rib cage because it helped her body if you would continue to do that. At times it helped her body fill up the connection. So double bonus here. I got a great connection but I could feel the energy of her body inviting me to continue to follow through with what she's doing in her body. So you can sense that without that shape, there's no use, there's no use of the body to create an, an emotion. So the shape of your body is so incredibly important to be able to create a feeling. And you can see in Olga's face and her expression, just through the intent and the feeling of my body as to how she reacts to this. And she's just gonna keep giving and stretching so you can see the contraction of her muscles in her center and to pull herself back up into this lovely shape. So Olga, if you would like to discuss some of the principles about the shaping and the rotation to create the actions for our ladies. Well, we have so many ways to help you to develop your body. And the, the way David start our um, conversation today, it's about our slow walls, how to create the feeling how music and 
give it to you a different feel to what your body can create. So if you imagine this is the floor, if you can separate this floor um, about this way, it can be you have half up area and low area. Every time when you stay in this level, you will, your all movement will be very vertical, very strong, very positive. Everything will you do, go above, it will be your lightness. Above this line will create lightness, giveness, over. When you create a slow waltz, it's always about up and heavy. Oh, it's always about that up and light. And the second part of the slow waltz, it can be heavy and down underneath of this line. So you can create different feel to the, your emotion or your movement. So again, when you go up, it'll be very light. Some music is very light, very, um, very given. Some music is very set. So every time when music set, you'll create more contractional action, more low underneath. The first person who is talking about contraction and that energy or sadness, it was Martha Graham. She, the first lady who danced in the White House, and she is developing that heaviness. And I know many of the actors in that time was studying and working with her because she allowed people to cry. To when you contract and compress this and create a sad feeling, you have chance to create different emotion. And quite often when I work with different couples and people come to me and they said, Olga, I really like your expression or your arm. What did you do? I said, I didn't do anything. I didn't try to develop any different feeling with my emotion. The only one thing I tried to do, I use my body to develop the action or expression will come from the emotion. Motion, as David said, is, will help you to create your emotion. Now, if we're talking about uh, our rib case and how we can use more to develop our style, I like the day of the explanation. So when you, you probably can uh, sit on the chair or even just stay uh, towards the mirror in a low position and you feel how you use your rib case separated from your uh, hip. So you can all push in from one side to another. Now the pushing action is always stronger than the pulling action. You can imagine if you go to the grocery store and carry the very heavy cart, you normally push. The pushing is very easy to do. The pulling is going to be much harder. So if you imagine if you pull one side, it'll be look, look not as positive, it'll be not as strong as you pushing one to another side. So when you push side to side, you can create this separation between your hip and your rib case. You'll have a huge big line. You'll have a counterbalance. The balance will happen because you have a counterbalance. Now you can follow up what David suggests to turn the body and have more diagonal feeling forward and back. You can also experience with the pushing action. You can go on other side, turn you through the spine and follow with the rotation, left and right. You can create very good diagonal separation from your hip and your ribcage or to the elbow. You can use that with the many ways as you go uh, forward and back. When you separate your ribcage forward and your upper, your elbow will go back. Then you move your spine back, your elbow go forward. You also can to balance yourself. You have chance to maintain your balance because you have a good counterbalance with yourself. Also, you can see I start to use my arm to connect to my, or my arm is connected to my body. I'm not just open my arm. Even you still not need to know how to open your arm. So you need to using your compression through the elbow and continue with the wrist. When you go down, you need to use your elbow and finish your wrist. You better to have against some weight to create more tension. So the arm will be not as weak. You'll have like pressure against the air and then pressure against 
the air in. Now we're going to use this to do you use this idea, but we're going to use this, use our body or rib case to develop our arm. So I will going to push my left side towards right side and towards my elbow. And I'm going to use my right side towards my left side and bring my elbow in. Again, using one side, then the other side. You can see how your arm developing this beautiful shape and follow your body. But I'm not trying to do anything separate from my arm. You can use this is in a more um, like a, a figure eight or V position when your body go up and around, up and around. And your arm will follow with that action. You will follow with that action. You can see how much shape and how much action you can create with your body. You can do the same way, diagonal forward. You can be up and around this way. You can certainly can do with your back arm here. It depends to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You can use, continue use rotation, perhaps left and right, and your arm can follow with that shape, and you can certainly follow with shape back. You can see how much you can progress and develop your arm by using your body here. Yeah. So I would like for us to go back to this lunge that Olga was doing and show you again a variety of actions that we can produce with some of the information that we've just given you. Again, we're going to use waltz right now as the example. And then I'm going to change dances. We're going to do exactly the same move. And I want you to see how just the change of the intent of the dance can create a different action. Same step, but we'll do a different action. But I'd like to do a couple of versions of this lunge. <clears throat> I would like for Olga to be able to do this lunge for you and to demonstrate the contraction and the shaping that she was talking about. Watch her body quite closely as I dance to her. And you see as I get ready to come at her that there's this contraction. And then she's going to finish out with this beautiful shape. Now again, the balance that she has and the expression that she feels is occurring because of these diagonal shapes that we're producing through the back, from the back into the front. So I'm going to take this action right now as if this waltz music that we're getting ready to dance to is very heavy, very sad, and very dramatic. So you see the heaviness again that she talked about and then the lightness as it comes alive and it picks itself back up. So these expressions are very, very important for you to be able to do when this particular type of music was to be played for you. We'll do this same action again. We're going to take a waltz that may sound a little bit on the happier, brighter edge that has a little bit more of an up feeling than it does the heaviness. So it has a total different expression to it, but yet it's exactly the same step. In your choreography, no one's asking you to change the timing, no one's asking you to take any more or any less steps. But again, to just be so aware of the expressions of your body. So if we could have some waltz music now, we're going to hopefully give you an example in the music as to how this makes us feel. Okay. So the feeling of this piece of music for me was a little bit more on the brighter, happier edge. It was very giving and it was very loving. And so both of us, as we started to take in the move, we popped a big smile at each other because of the feeling that we were sharing between the other. And so, you know, we talk about the facial expression. We talk about, you know, where do I look? There's no choice. There's no choice here about what to do with your face and where to look because there's so much understanding and 
creating the feeling that's between the two of us that there really is no option about where to look. If I'm at her and I'm giving to her, and she's going to be looking right at me, and she's just going to take me right in with her. And so it just creates <clears throat> so much less to think about. You don't have to think about where your head is. You don't have to think about where to look. You don't have to think about what to do with your arm. You just have to allow yourselves to get emotionally involved. Do you know, I remember... When I was working at the club 2005 in Los Angeles, I had a student and I just explained to him, in the beginning of the routine, you just need to walk to the stage, you need to just walk to the floor. It is very simple, nice walking, very relaxing, nice energy go down. He said, Olga, for you, you just walking so beautifully. For me, I can walk like this, you know, of course, when we just explain it's very simple, you don't need to look down, you need to look up, you don't need to think what you're doing, you just need to get emotion. But how to create this emotion? That is very difficult things. How to develop emotion? What do we do? We're talking about how to use our arm by using body. But the emotion is will change how to create this atmosphere of the of the feeling, of the dancing. The one thing that might be very helpful to you is understanding about your body. So have your body here. You have your space in front. You can see. You can have your space on the side, on the back. You have your body space. Now, when I create, I need to first of all create my personal space and space in front of me, on the side, on the back, to make myself visible and bigger. So I can't just stay this way. I need to develop space in front. So what should I do? First of all, I'm thinking to compress down with my feet to go up. So I'm compressing down to go up. You will feel like you have this tension in the center. I'll call this in the center of the gravity. You have compression from the floor to the foot to your center. You compression, you elevate the center in. Now, if you want to show your space in front, you will kind of suck it in and create the space in front of you here. Now, you can see the difference between I've just opened my arm or create tension. So, like a little magnet, you push away to fill the space in front of you. You also can imagine if I want to show what happened on my right side, I also compress down and kind of slightly push away from this space to create what happened on my that side. You can do the same on the left side. So now you can see when I do this, I take all energy from the front to the side to show where my partner is. He will react to this. It's very difficult to show your back, but it's necessarily. Some, I, ha I hear many different expressions, how to be aware. And let's see if I just turn back. And you didn't see, I right now, not connect with David. I'm not connected with my partner, but he wants to know what I'm doing. He wants to relate to me. I'm doing the same. As I compress down and contract, and I'm aware of the space behind me with my head. I'm going towards his space with my head, with my spine, to fill the space, now you can see we're together. So we have a connection between each other. Now I have my personal space. Now I have a space in front of me here. Now I'm ready to dance with my partner. If we stay about this, space, this way, I have my personal space. David has his personal spa space. We're in a social position. We touch each other, but we start to develop this nice energy. We can change this by creating tension. You can open your arm like this and feel like a magnet. You squeeze in and compress very slowly. And if you like a magnet, you pull away. That's what our energy will, will try to create with our body. But remember, I'm not just pushing in and out. I'm compressing down as well. Now we try to change the distance and get closer, closer, create a tension, nice magnet. That's what we're going to create for you in the style. We can move to each other 
we can move away from each other, we can move with each other. So that's what happened in our first step. As we start to dance, David and I said, and myself, we get to each other. Now I will pull away. I take my energy and I bring him to my level. I can come again to him and pass and invite him again. So you can see how much we relate to each other. We're not just moving together, but we're squeezing to each other. We're pulling away. We build up that energy together. We will demonstrate this action one more time to this piece of music. like to take you now is to show you an example of what we were talking in the beginning of this segment about how to create an emotion out of your body by just thinking about what dance am I doing? Not necessarily what step am I doing, but what dance am I doing? What kind of attitude am I going to take into my body that first exemplifies the dance of which that I'm getting ready to demonstrate? So we would like to take this same motion and create a variety of emotions on it just by thinking of the change of the dance. I'm not going to tell you what dance it is, but in two seconds it will be very obvious. So, if you guess tango, you are right. Exactly the same step. Same number of steps everything exactly the same. She moved backwards, I moved forward, she lunged, I lunged. But the energy and the speed of the body, the intensity of the tone of my muscles totally changed in order to create the intent that I'm going to do this motion and create a tango emotion out of it. So if I was to tell you what I was thinking in my body, I'm thinking of a quicker action. I'm thinking of more of an attack. I'm thinking of more of a challenge of the space of which that she's standing in. My goal here, as always, is to get a reaction. To try to get a reaction out of her physically, to try to get a reaction out of her emotionally and visually that can invite us and to take us into even the next action. So just the feeling of my body is totally changed because I'm thinking of tango. You can see the attitude that I'm already getting from the energy that she feels in my body. Again, this is what we're trying to avoid. I don't know what that is. I don't think my partner feels for me what that is. So, if I'm standing out on the competition floor and I'm waiting for that dance and all of a sudden that music starts and I hear what it is, I can decide at this point, as soon as I hear that music, what intensity, what level of tone that my body needs to take on in order to create the emotion that I'm wanting to create. Even though tango is very staccato, I could still take a very gentle approach. So it's very optional. But again, it is totally about what is it that you're feeling? What is it that you're listening to? How does this make you feel? So I would like to show you again with the music how an action like this, how an emotion could take over by what it is that I'm listening to. She doesn't know when I'm going to come to her. She's just going to feel and register off of my body. You can see again that one was totally different than the one before. I had a quick pickup of my weight, I had a very very strong stretch out of my body and it totally changed the emotional feeling that come out of us here. One other action that we can show you real quickly 
that will help you in being able to characteristically and emotionally feel an action is how slow that we drop the weight, how slow we pick the weight up, or just vice versa, how fast that it drops and how fast that the weight gets picked up. It's like the musician when they play a note. They have an option to go into the note very soft and create a crescendo on the end. They have the option, according to the music, as to whether they are to staccato every quarter beat that they're going to play. And in our body and in our movement, we're accenting the pitch and the speed of the play of those notes by how slow or how fast that we pick our weight up. Although I'm really not wanting to talk about choreography with you, if you think about what is your choreography sort of formatted for you to do. Five, step, five beats on one step and then three beats on the next. So to move one step in five beats would require a lot more relaxation and a slower drop of my body weight to fill out those five beats and then a quick pickup and an attack for the next three. So again, this is giving my body the opportunity to really express myself musically and I'm not going to say that that would be the case all the time because it would depend upon our music. So once again, this section here, learning how to create an emotion out of your body is very, very important to your dancing. We want you to take that information, go back into your choreography and your routines and experiment.